Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here, and in this video I'm going to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 does come out on Friday, August 19th of 2016. And so in this video I'm going to talk about everything that you guys need to know about the phone. A lot of the stuff that is brand new that is starting with this phone in terms of little features or the user interface. And so I'm going to take a lot of your guys' suggestions and comments from my past videos. I'm going to try to make it short and sweet for everybody. Um, and then all the rest of the little nitty gritty, all of the deep dive stuff will come in separate videos. Uh, one example would be the camera. So one of the things that I would like to do is in, in future videos, I am going to show off the camera more in depth, but there is a little bit of new user interface, little UI that is dealing with the camera. And so in the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, one of the things that you're able to do is swipe down or you'd actually be able to swipe up to change your shooting camera. So if you're using the front or the back. So this way you wouldn't have to hold the phone and go to a particular part of the screen to actually change uh, the front facing or rear facing camera. Same thing with the modes and also the filters. So if you swipe it to the right hand side going that way, this is where all your modes are at. The other thing you can do is swipe on back over to the left and here we go, we're gonna go to the left and this is the live filter. So this way you'd be able to see exactly how the photo is gonna turn out when you choose it. So I will go a little bit more in depth in the camera later on uh, with some separate videos. Just make sure you guys stay tuned for those. Now, one of the other things that has changed with this phone is going to be the always on display. So the always on display is something that is definitely handy and yes, it does save your battery. So a lot of the times when you guys are thinking that, oh, this might be taking some battery, it does. My guess is that after about an 18 hour day, it's going to down about 4% through that time. Now, if you did not have the always on display, you will always be turning on the entire screen just to see the time and that takes much more battery. So my guess is that you're probably gonna be using somewhere around 15 to 20% of screen time just by checking the clock about the 100 to 150 times a day. So that is something that I talked about with any other phone that featured the always on display. So here is what is new with the Galaxy Note 7. So you pull out the S Pen when the screen was off and this is referred to as screen off memo. So again, the screen was not turned on, I was not on the normal lock screen, it was just as the always on display. You take out the S Pen and then this is where you'd be able to take all of your notes. And so let's say you're gonna be doing this and you gotta go shopping, so you're gonna get that. Um, you're also gonna go get that. Uh, and then you're going to get this as well. But you need to get a little bit more and write more. Here is a down arrow which actually takes you to the next page. This was something that is brand new with this phone. So this way you'd be able to take more of your notes. Now beforehand you are able to save it or delete it. Now you have the option to pin. So now when you pin this, this will go to the always on display. And now you have a new little icon which is right there on the very left hand side. In order for you to see this, you just double tap on that and then now you'd be able to view the note that you just took. So the benefit of having this is that if you were to take some notes, um, you would have to think in the back of your mind, hey, open up your phone, go to the memos or the go to the notes because I wrote something there. This is always reminding you, always right here, every time you look at the, the little time right there, you're gonna notice, oh shoot, I do have a little memo, what was it? Oh, that's right, I gotta go to the store and I gotta get this, this, and this. So that is something that is brand new with the always on display. So let's actually get inside of the phone and I'm gonna show off the little IR blaster. So you see that little red light that you saw up there? Or actually in the camera, it almost looked purple. That is the infrared blaster. So it's emitting the infrared, which is where your eyes will go into those little circles to unlock the phone. So I have mine set up with a pattern and I also have mine set up with a little fingerprint as well. So once you go inside your phone, this is where you'd be able to use it. Now, it happens to be that from where my little camera is and the tripod, I'm not able to get close enough to use uh, the infrared from here. So you will have to be just a little bit closer and know the infrared will not hurt your eyes. When you set it all up, it's gonna mention that this will turn off after nine seconds. In order for the infrared to hurt your eyes, you have to look at it for more than 30 seconds and very, very, very close to your eyes. So let's go into the air command. So what you do is you press on the S Pen button and then you pull it right on out. So inside of here, you're gonna see a couple new ones. So here is air command. Um, one of the things you'd be able to do is if you hit on that little pen, um, you're able to actually move this wherever you want it to go. Um, so I'm gonna have mine, let's put it right over here. So once you open it on up, you have glance, magnify, translate, um, which these right here I believe I added. Here's screen write, smart select, and also create note. So let's go inside of create note. So the cool thing about uh, what Samsung did with the Note 7 is that they combined everything, the S-Memo, uh, Samsung Notes, Scrapbook, 
um, all that stuff. They put it into one and this is the one app you use. So the thing that's new is when you go inside of brush, so when you click on the arrow, this is going to show you all the different brushes and pens and markers and highlighters you can use. When you hover the S Pen, it'll actually let you know which one it is. So right over here is the oil paintbrush. It is the second one in. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how accurate uh, and, you know, realistic this is. So here is the red. So I'm going to hit over here and choose yellow. So what happens with any other phone that Samsung has had, when I was to bring up the yellow and if I was to draw through it, it will actually stay yellow and it overlaps the red. Now that is not realistic if you're doing oil painting. So when you draw right through it, you're gonna notice it actually changes the color of exactly what it's supposed to do. So this is definitely realistic for anybody out there who would like to draw and color and paint and stuff like that. Um, also you have a direct icon right here for pen up. So then this way you guys can create an account. If you guys are big drawers, make sure you guys put up over there so you guys can get followers. Um, it's kind of like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that where you create stuff or you post things and then people follow and like. So let's go over into translate. So I believe I've got something either in my Google or, oopsie, I don't wanna go on to YouTube. Let's go into the Chrome. So here is a Korean website that I was able to find. Um, and you guys would be able to use this with either a website, you can use the picture uh, that either you take or you find online. So what you do is you hover the S Pen and then you hit the S Pen button when you see that little dot. So when you click on translate, you wanna make sure that you have either mobile data or Wi-Fi. And what you do is you just hover your little S Pen over any of the words or sentences, and then this is where it'll let you know what it is in your language. And so they do actually give you guys a lot of different languages it's able to translate from and to. So you'll definitely know that you'll be able to be taken care of if you're you know, traveling or going abroad or you're eating at a random restaurant you've never been to. Now with Magnify, Magnify is really cool. So let's say like maybe we're looking at an image right now, or you're looking online, you're buying shoes or a t-shirt, you basically hit on Magnify. And on the very top, you'd be able to choose if you want it to be 150, 200, 250, or 300. So what you do is you just hover the S Pen over, and now this right here is able to let you know and show you um, exactly what it looks like you know, at a closer scale, which is definitely really nice. So now let's check out Glance. This is the one that's on the very bottom. What Glance does is it's a way to multitask in a different way. So what it does is it'll actually show whatever app you're looking at, it will shrink it down in a very small frame so you can open up a different application and then all you do is you hover to reshow that screen again without going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth while opening an application. So let me show you an example. Let's say you go into the calendar because you're about to shoot a text message or email or whatever with your friend to figure out when you're gonna head over to a concert. So I'm looking at the calendar, I hit the S yes Pen button, and now I hit on Glance. So what happens is it actually puts a little screen on the very bottom right hand side, this is where you just hover. I'm not touching, nor am I hitting the S yes Pen button, I'm just hovering and it shows me the screen. I'm gonna head over into Messages. And so now I'm gonna go down here and it's gonna be like, yo, hey, let's go over to this one, uh, what about this date? And then they let you know what it is, and then you just hover the S yes Pen on the very bottom, and then you can see if it coincides or if it's gonna work or not work, and then you go right on back, and then you're gonna let that person know right again if that date is gonna work or not. So that right there was Glance. So we, we talked a lot about what the S Pen is able to do with the different features, but let me show you guys these settings. When you open up Air Command, you just hit on the settings on the very bottom left-hand side. This is where you have the shortcuts. So this is where you'd be able to choose what you'd like to have on the right-hand side. If there's any of these you don't wanna have, hit on that little dash. And you scroll down, and this will work with any application that you have on your phone. And remember that this is gonna be the shortcuts with the air command. And so with talking a little bit about that, it is a little similar with the edge screen. So I have mine on the right hand side, this is exactly right where my thumb would go naturally. So I kind of pull it on out and then this is my fast applications to head into. So if I wanted to go into Pokemon Go, this is where I'd be able to head up into that. But then I get a text message or somebody sends me a Voxer or I need to check the clock. Now I'm gonna be checking the clock, I'm gonna see what's going on, I can set a timer, I can see what my alarms are, pull this right on back out, and now I'm right back up over into the game as well. So the edge screen is really nice where you'd be able to have all your different applications. And again, hit on the settings icon to change the apps. Um, and then this is going to be your people edge. And then this is the quick tasks. This is where you basically will have your task that you can open up really quick. So my little dude, I always show a picture off of him all the time. I always run into friends or family um, and people ask me, how's he doing? Is he getting big? And blah, blah, blah. Instead of going into the gallery and I'm scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, I'm trying to find a particular image that I would like to show off. I just open up my edge screen, click on the picture, 
and there we go. So that's how you'd be able to do that really quick. Now, if you wanna see some of the things you can do with the Tasks Edge, you just click on the plus icon, scroll on down, and these are all the different things you'd be able to assign a task to do. And then you have a little up arrow right there to bring you back up to the very top. So let's move it on over to the very next screen. This is one that I actually did download. I went over into the Galaxy apps or the Essential apps, um, Galaxy Essentials, which is just basically on the home screen. I clicked it open, and that was where I found Samsung Music. So I downloaded it, and, I, and it actually added it um, as a little bar on the right-hand side. So now from over here, you just be able to you know, manage all the music you play just by hitting next and back and then the play and pause. Um, and again, we're back to the applications I have right here. So if there's any of these that you would like to change, all you got to do is hit on these settings, and this is where you can change the edge panels. So if there's any of these you would like to add, put a little checkbox on the very top. So that's pretty simple and self-explanatory. The other thing is on the very bottom where it says edit. This is where you can edit what applications is going to be shown there, which people you would like to have um, on the edge, and also the different tasks. So if there's anything you'd like to change, you would just do it right there. Now, if you are left-handed and you don't want to have the little bar over there, just go to the handle settings. So this is where you'd be able to change the transparency um, of your little uh, tab right there. You can make it to where it's going to be small. Uh, you can also make it large, and I just have mine basically as medium. And then you can make it left or right side. So you just basically put it wherever you want it to, and then you can press and hold and place it exactly right where you would like to have it from where it's going to be convenient for your thumb. So let's talk about the little charger change on the bottom. So on the bottom of the Galaxy Note 7, this one is going to be USB Type-C. So you might be thinking to yourself, dang it, I've got a lot of stuff at home that is micro USB. You know what, don't worry about it, Samsung definitely thought of you. So this right here is a normal micro USB. This is the Samsung Fast Adaptive Charger. Um, and this is actually the little adapter, uh, the little OTG little piece that comes with the box. Sorry, I got a little bit of a marker on my hand. Um, so this is will come with the box to where you just plug it into anything that is micro USB. And now you got USB type C. So the nice thing about USB type C is that it does go in either way. So you, you'd be able to plug it in either that way or you can spin it around and plug it in this way. So that's one of the benefits of having USB type C, which is also the reason why uh, Apple switched theirs over to the lightning cables because they loved the little, uh, option of having that little feature so they copied the usb type c and made the lightning cable so don't worry about if you have anything this one is backwards compatible with that little piece and it does come with inside the box it also comes with the normal otg for the usb so this way you'd be able to plug in anything and do your samsung smart switch uh, you can plug in your thumb drives and everything else so just to kind of talk a little bit about the phone too since i talked about the charger uh, you know what, let's talk about the internal storage so this one is 64 gigs of internal storage so it's not 32 anymore and it is now doubled what the note 5 was it also has the expandable storage on the very top so it's the same thing as the galaxy s7 and s7 edge so you'd be able to actually expand your storage all the way up to 256 gigs so that means you're starting off with 64 internal, expanding it with by 256 gigs, and now you're up to 320 gigs, which is crazy. Now, the internal battery on this, the Note 5 used to be a 3000. This one is a 3500. So when you're looking at the price of this bad boy, um, you're getting the bigger battery. You're getting larger storage, which is basically double. You're also able to expand it. But not only that, this phone is IP68, which means it's dust proof and water resistant. So again, up to 30 minutes, up to five feet. Would I take it in a pool? No, um, but you're able to, but I would not do it. It's basically meant for if you accidentally spill water or anything on it. Now, if you spill beer, champagne, Kool-Aid, whatever, make sure you rinse it off in a faucet so you don't have all that sitting uh, sugars and, and everything else. So let's talk about the GIF animator. This one's going to be really fun, and a lot of people are going to have fun with it um, and be really creative. One of the ways you'll be able to do it is just open up the camera. So if you're watching TV, just point this thing at the TV. If you're pointing it at a friend, do whatever you want to, and then hover the S Pen, hit the S Pen button, and click on Smart Select. Once you click on Smart Select, this is where you have the GIF animation. This is where you'd be able to, uh, sorry, switch it around. You'd be able to move this around, make it big or small, and then you can change this wherever you'd want to. You can make it high or low quality, doesn't matter. Then just click on Record. And whatever it captures is going to be a little GIF. And so you'd be able to send this to your friends if something awesome or funny was going on. Um, the other place you'd be able to do it is also on YouTube. So if you're watching a YouTube video, you can take any snippet out of a YouTube video and make it into a GIF. Um, one of the other cool things, too, let's just say that you go into Pokemon Go and you want to show off what the Bellsprout does for its little dance. So you just hover the S Pen, click on the button. Again, click on the little Smart Select, click on the GIF animation, 
Let's move it on up over into the 705 so you can show off if you got something big. And then now you hit on record. And then this will go all the way up for the uh, 15 seconds. And then you just hit on stop. And then as long as you're happy and you got everything you need, now you have your own GIF and you can be able to share it. So just remember, not every single social media accepts GIFs, um, especially YouTube. You have to actually upload it to, or I'm sorry, Facebook. You'd have to upload it to a different website, and then you'd have to share that link with Facebook for it to work. But you'd still be able to share any of your gifts that you have with any messaging application, but not text messaging. One of the things you might be seeing on my front screen here is the secure folder. So Samsung got away from having private mode, and this one will basically take its place. So you can get in there with either using your fingerprint, you can use your iris, um, and you can also use your little um, uh, passwords as well. So when you go inside of it, the thing that's really nice is that you can actually have several different applications up here, and you can have two different logins. So a lot of people will actually have a work Facebook, and then they'll have a personal Facebook. Some people have a work Twitter. Some people have a personal Twitter. This is actually a way that when you actually go to the homepage, this is where you can have your personal stuff or your work stuff. You open up your secure folder, then this is where you would have the other one. Now, yes, it is going in right away, but once you're done with your secure folder, this is where you hit the little lock icon. And now if anybody sees it, they're not able to go in. So this is really nice if you have a lot of documents that you're not able to share, a lot of things that may be confidential. Um, maybe let's say that you, uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend, spouse, whoever it is, um, they mentioned something in the store that they really wanna have. So you go into your secure folder, you can go inside your camera, you can actually take a really fast snapshot of what they wanted and now it is actually inside the gallery um, and here's a little phone case that I got for the Galaxy Note 7. Um, but now it's in your gallery that they're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, and then this way you'd be able to keep it a secret. And then you'd be able to have your work email here and then your personal email is on the other side, your work contacts, keep your personal contacts on the other side. And this is just convenient and it's awesome. Now when you hit on the little settings icon there, you go inside settings, this is where you'd be able to change it. So some people might not wanna have the secure folder that's main, you know, right on the home screen. You can actually hide that. And then you can say, you know, what's the lock type. Um, you have the auto lock, so you can do it when the screen turns off. Um, you can do it after five minutes. Uh, you can do it when the device starts. So you can really kind of customize this exactly where you want it. And if you don't want it, you can just install it or uninstall it. Now, everything that I've done in here is not going to show up in here. So if I take a image inside the secure folder, it will not show up on my personal side. So I'm just going to hit on that little lock icon. So make sure you guys kind of play with that and use it. So if you are trying to hide something or maybe you need something legally where you're saving you know, pictures or text messages and things, um, you can be able to put it in there with all the different uh, files and folders. So going into one of the things that is new again with this phone. When you scroll down the notifications panel and you scroll down again, this is where you have all of your different notifications and all the different settings um, and, and everything else. So what happened from before is if you wanted to check out all the Wi-Fi's in your area with any other phone, you would press and hold on an icon. But now what it does is it's a way for you to actually edit and move around where you want to change it. So now you don't press and hold for the rest of all the different settings. All you do is there is a little down arrow and you click the down arrow and that gives you all your options. So for example, let's go over into power saving because this is something I want to talk about. So when you hit the down arrow, here is all your different options. So there is no ultra power saving mode anymore and no more battery saving mode or whatever it was power saving mode. Um, right now it's actually just one title. It is power saving mode and then you can choose if you like it to be mid or max in terms of the settings that is used um, with the power saving. So when you click on mid, this is where you can look at it and this is uh, basically how it's set up automatically. This is the default. If you would like to customize it, hit on the customize. So right here you can, you can limit the maximum brightness. So if you would like it to have a minimum of 100%, this is basically when you're in the sun. Now if you would like to save a little bit more of your battery, your phone will never go past 80% for the brightness, which this does actually save a lot of your battery. So you can choose where you like it to go. And then you can also make it to where for the uh, resolution. So if you like it to have only HD, and then it would go down to 90%, then that's fine. And then here's your other two toggles down here. It's the limit device performance, and then prevent background usage. So the other one that you have, let's pull down again, you go twice, go into power saving, and then here is max. So what this one does is it puts it down to 80% max. It'll put the screen resolution down to HD, but the biggest change is that it puts the background as black, which this will save you a ton of battery. So if you wanna check it on out, this right here, uh, estimated battery life, uh, I'm at 73% right now. This is stating it will last me 21 hours and 36 minutes. Also on the very top, with all the different settings, you also have one for flashlight. So when you hit the down arrow, 
And if you want to, you can turn it on first or you just hit the down arrow and, and there is the on switch. So right now you kind of see behind the phone that there's a little bit of a flashlight. If I want to, I can make it bright. So this is if maybe you're at home all alone and you want to check something out. Or if you got the kiddo sleeping or your spouse or whatever, um, you can still have a little bit of a brightness, but not going to be extremely bright. So that is something that is, you know, really cool and definitely helpful. Now, when you go up inside and you go into the settings, so I know I'm kind of going a little fast, but like I said, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, get to the point and let you guys know what is new. And you can always replay or pause and, and back up. So let's head over into the settings. Inside the settings, one of the things that's pretty nice is underneath display. Down here, you're going to see where it says icon frames. This is something new on the Galaxy Note 7. So when you hit on the icon frames, right now I have mine with a frame. Now, if you want it to only be icons, you can kind of see the difference. So there is um, different applications that is coming from Google, some of them that's coming from Samsung. Uh, they both have two different ways of showing their little icons. So this right here just kind of puts it all and they are constant. So if you would like it to have um, either with the frames or without, that is where you'd be able to change um, your little settings for that. Let's go back up into the settings another time because this one is a pretty big one for the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, and this is good for anybody who loves their sleep. So there is a thing referred to as blue light filter, and you can look at the opacity and, and how much you like to have it. So I just kind of have mine at, at halfway, which is where it always has been. So what a blue light filter does is that I have mine set. If you go to more settings, you can either have it as no schedule, automatic schedule, or custom. So I have mine set up that at 8 o'clock at night, it'll turn on and it'll stop at 7 a.m. in the morning. So what happens is when you have the blue light filter on, what'll happen is that it'll actually take away the blue light. So here's the blue light, and then here is not the blue light. Now, at nighttime, when you're looking at your phone and you're looking at all that blue light, it's, it's suppressing your melatonin, so it's hurting you to go to bed. Your body has to have melatonin, it naturally produces it, and that is what makes you tired and lay down in your bed. So make sure you have this on. Usually I put mine from eight until seven, but you guys can put it at, at anything that you have, you know, that is hurt or helping your schedule. So I hope you guys liked the video. This was pretty much everything that you guys would need to know for a daily basis use. Everything that was new with the Galaxy Note 7, some of the different features, and also some of the different benefits as well too. So there's a lot more that I'd be able to shoot and also record, but I'm going to do that with some more singled and one-off videos so I can go more in-depth. Definitely one of them will be the camera, and I'll, I can also do another one with the different edge screen functions. I can also do more with the Air Command and the S Pen if you guys would like. So uh, I'm going to find some little tips and tricks, little hidden things. You have to go through all the different settings, but make sure you guys like my channel and you guys would also like the video and subscribe as well too. You can follow me on all the other social media sites I'm on. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I'll see you guys later.